Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 13 of my 3D printed scrap metal sculpture inspired Geiger alien xenomorph suit, which I've got quite a way with. Last time we worked on the tail, which I've got just here, which came out awesomely. And this is loads of 3D printed sections attacked, uh, attached to foam pipe insulation. So I was gonna glue these sections on and paint all the gray parts black with black Plasti Dip, which is a brush on or spray on rubber. But I'm not gonna do that just yet. So I need to pay particular attention to the spacing and how much pipe lagging is sticking out of the end here where it attaches to the body. So this needs to be an extension of the spine, but I'm gonna work out the mounting on the back of the suit before I glue these sections on so I can check how much needs to stick out to attach to that spine section. So let's have a look at the back of the suit. So I have this thing on a harness, which you can see here, and these pieces are gonna be painted black eventually. Um, this is made of webbing strap, some plaster foam for padding, um, and these um, sort of brown parts are something called Maplex board, which is a kind of fibrous wood board. It's a bit, well, it's very much tougher than cardboard, but it's quite flexible and you can crease it. Um, so that's really tough and it really spreads the load. And I've got these metal brackets, so the whole shoulder thing and the front of the torso are mounted on, so the whole thing just lifts off. So I've already printed this part, which is this panel here, which we'll have a closer look at in a moment, which has got some keyways in it to attach different pieces and also these two blocks that the metal brackets go into. So this is actually gonna be bolted onto the Maplex board and I may be heating this and bending it slightly so it contours for the back. Um, so this is gonna be attached to the board and it's gonna be bolted on and it's gonna hold these pieces so they stay in place. And then I've got these keyways cut so we can strap on more flexible sections down the rest of the back. So we've of course got that licky tongue piece that comes out, we've got the dorsal tubes um, and we also need to make a mounting for the tail. So down at the bottom here, we've got a waist strap, which is again made of Maplex board and foam. It's extremely substantial, um, but I want to basically put uh, articulated 3D printed sections down the back to hold all the features and have them bolted on to these Maplex board sections at the top and the bottom to make a really substantial tail section mounting. And um, we also need to run the features that we had down the tail all the way up the spine and onto the back of that tongue piece so um, we need to make sure we can continue that tail feature with flexible sections so the back can flex around. And the other thing I wanted to do was have an animatronic tail. So I've allowed some channels down the side to pull nylon 3D printer filament, which is really tough. So we can pull the tail around and hopefully that's gonna, those uh, cords are gonna continue down the leg. So when I put my right leg back, it uh, pulls the tail round to the right. So um, we'll have to work that out when we get there, but let's have a look at the other bits and pieces. The top part here is the part I just showed you, and it's got these two hooks for the metal um, chassis parts, and those are the yellow parts are separate pieces which are gonna be acetone welded on. Um, and as you can see there, there's several keyways for the big tongue piece, the strap holes in the bottom, and also some holes there to bolt that onto the Maplex board. So um, looking at the piece below it, which is currently printing at the moment, this is a big square section which has got four major keyways which are the four sort of square holes in it and those are to hold the dorsal tubes. Uh, we've got strap um, keyways above and below. We've got two keyways in the middle there which are to mount the tail on as it runs all the way up the spine or that tail feature. And then the bottom section here has these um, extra keyways which are to put the rest of the rib cage which goes around to meet the front of the rib cage where I've currently got an elastic strap kind of holding the ribs back. So um, this thing's got um, some channels in it. So let's just zoom in here. So these two channels that run down the middle, I'm hoping to heat those with a hot air gun once I've printed it so I can contour it round. So instead of it being totally flat, um, the um, dorsal tubes can be made to sort of stick out slightly. And I can also bend it down the middle where I've got this thinner section right in the middle. Um, and that allows the dorsal tubes to be bent so they can uh, face away in opposite directions um, up and down and side to side. So that whole thing is gonna be um, a bit like a tortoise shell, but not so extreme. So it's gonna be um, having those four sections facing outwards in all directions and a kind of piece down the spine for holding the tail feature. Then below that, we need to make the piece that mounts on the waist strap and that's going to hold the actual tail itself. But all of these sections will be attached together with straps through the keyways in the top and bottom. So let's get that printing and see what it looks like. That print is well underway on the Taz 4. It's quite useful that it fits on the large bed, which is um, 
just under 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres. So we'll just leave that to print. Um, shouldn't take too long and then we'll try heating it and bending it. Here's that piece that I've just printed that took about four and a half hours. So obviously it's totally flat at the moment but what we want to do is bend it along these lines and across the middle there so it's kind of bent in all directions and these four square holes are for the dorsal tubes to attach they obviously need to point out in um, very slightly opposite directions so we're going to heat this up with a hot air gun and just put those bends in very gently so the plan is to use this hot air gun to just heat along that seam um, this isn't very directional though so I'm going to use a steel ruler and I'm just going to shield the rest of this so I can heat down here just a bit and then we're going to put it over the edge of the table and just bend those two very slightly. There we go. And you want a very gradual bend in there. And we'll do the same to the other side. So there's that, we've got that very gradual bend in there and now we're just going to do the same across the middle just to get those to be bent slightly that way. So I'm just going to again heat that. I've just velcroed that piece on there with the um, strap keyways that I left. So the first piece is bolted on now, I've taken off the shoulder harness with the metal brackets. So that now follows the contour of the back quite nicely. Um, as I said, these four keyways are for the dorsal tubes to be attached, which are going to curve down and up and in that typical shape. I don't know if they're going to be animatronic yet. If they do, it'll be one servo each that just makes them twitch a bit, um, but they may just be stationary. But obviously those are going to be a big 3D printed structure. And then we need to make another piece that goes all the way down here, which is where the tail attaches. So here's the end of my tail. So that is going to be fixed here somewhere and then we need to co um, continue this dagger pattern so probably what's going to happen is there's going to be a two piece plate that goes either side um, which these pieces of pipe insulation attach to so I can bring out the animatronic cords and um, we may well find that the continuation of the tail is rigid onto these two sections so it continues up in the small of the back of the wearer and actually this is braced against it. So um, that just stops the tail sort of turning the wrong way. And we've actually got some bracing. So we've also got these two holes in the side which clamp around to the side of the ribs. And those are gonna have some big rib structures on a bit like that either side. So this whole thing is gonna be held fairly firmly on the back. And um, the sections here are gonna be bolted onto this piece of Maplex board. So those of course need a feature to run the animatronic cords over to go down the legs. So they need to be fairly well braced and it's likely they'll meet up at the front with two more sections that hold the ab plate and those other parts. So let's have a look at what the bum plate is going to look like. Here are the two neck sections down, the right and left bum plates. And um, again, we've got these channels in so we can make bends to contour them around the belt piece. And we've got these keyway sections cut in here so that we can attach the actual tail mounting. Um, and hopefully that tail mounting, as I say, is going to be a rigid piece that goes onto the piece that holds the dorsal tubes above that. So that's going to hold that contour solid and brace the whole tail against the back. So we've got two printers, fortunately, and we can print those out at the same time. So we've got both machines working on those parts. One is doing the left hand bum plate and the other printer is doing the other one. So that should be done in half the time. I've also designed these two sections which get printed flat on the bed, but in fact get stuck back to back. And these are the parts that hold the tail. So if we just um, go and combine these like so, so they'll be acetone welded together. And that's where the tail comes in at the bottom to so these two pieces that spread out on an angle so we can get the cords to go down each leg. And we've also got this kink in the front, uh, which means that we can attach that to the plate which has the dorsal tubes attached. So this has got the keyways in the bottom that fit to all of those plates so that those can be uh, chemically welded on as well. And that makes up the sort of structure of the lower back. 
The two side panels are done here, which of course again get bent here to go round. So this comes onto the hip and there's going to be a feature there which I'll stick on afterwards which allows the um, nylon cord from the tail to be pulled down the leg. So I need to set this angle and um, I need to do that based on the tail mounting. So I've also printed the two parts which I've got here. Um, spot the deliberate mistake though, obviously I've printed two the same um, and now they don't fit back to back. So somehow I generated a mirror of the piece, generated two sets of G-code, and um, I thought I'd put them on separate printers, but um, having looked at the prints multiple times during the printing process, I didn't notice in fact they were identical. So I now need to print another one, and then I can stick those back to back. But I can work out um, what to do about how much I need to stick on the tail there. So taking the end here we can see how much we need to reveal so we need quite a bit more to stretch that out at each side to go into the two tail mounts so we can get all these sections stuck on the tail and get this painting up while the correct one is printing and then we can mount it all together. Here are the correct two halves that I've now got for the um, tail clamp piece which um, then attaches to the bum plates so uh, one of these goes each side where I've got these keys and that piece curves up to go to the small of the back. So we'll get those acetone welded together and we'll get that glued onto the tail. And then hopefully once the tail's all painted up, we can assemble it onto the rest of the suit. I've got as far as gluing most of these pieces onto the tail here. So these are all stuck on and I've used Gorilla Glue to do that. This is expanding glue that expands into gaps. So there's quite a few bits of expanded Gorilla Glue but they just snap off, so we'll clean those up shortly. And I've done the same to this half of the tail as well. So now I've got this piece, we can go and glue that on here. And once the glue's dry, I will go and paint all of the bits of grey foam black. And then we can make this fit onto the two plates. So I've got the mounting stuck on this end, and I've got my whole tail here. So there's that mounting glued on, um, and everything's looking really good. So now we need to paint the grey sections black. So I've got two products. The product I was going to use was uh, Black Plasti Dip, which is the brush-on version. But I also found this other um, stuff, which I happen to have almost a whole tin of. Um, and this is Thomson's 10-Year Roof Seal, which is a black rubberized paint. So um, this one I got in my local DIY store. It was actually the same price as the Plasti Dip. However, the Plasti Dip is 429 milliliters, so just under half a liter. And this one is a whole litre, so it's actually um, half the price, or, or better in fact, it's much better value. So I tried painting this on some foam, so I've got a test piece here. So it's extremely flexible, and obviously uh, matte black, the foam you can see is slightly textured there, it's just Plasterzo LD45, so that's worked really well, it seems really tough. The other advantage to this stuff is it's water-based, so the cleanup is with water, you just rinse the brushes out in water and a bit of washing up liquid, it's low VOCs, which means it's not solvent-based, so you don't really need to wear a respirator to use it. Um, it smells slightly chalky, but basically it's a water-based, non-toxic, in inverted commas, kind of coating. Whereas Plasti Dip is solvent-based, um, and if you use the spray version, you really shouldn't breathe it in, because it'll end up um, hospitalising you. So the stuff is um, known in some circles as death in a can. Although it's very good, because it's solvent-based. So... I think Plasti Dip is going to be harder wearing, but for these parts that are grey, they're all recessed, so they're never going to drag on the ground. So um, instead of using my nice tin of expensive Plasti Dip, I might as well use the Shed Roof Sealer to paint all those parts up, which, um, you know, it's going to be good enough, okay? So, um, well, let's get the lid off. So this stuff looks grey, but it actually dries a matte black, which is really good, and I'm just going to use a brush one of these brushes at least, probably that one. I'm just going to start at one end and get painting all those sections. And we need to spread it quite thinly so we don't pull the stuff anywhere. And we'll need to just wipe it off where we've got it on the plastic. So the next day those tail sections have dried and they are definitely black. You can see on this one where it's grey at one end and the rest is obviously a very much darker black and they're still lovely and flexible and everything's really good. So now we're going to shape up the bum plates and get this thing mounted.
I've shaped these up with heat as I did with the other panels. So now they actually are going to curve around so that these pieces come around to the hips to pull the cord for each side of the table on a hub that I'll mount on there. So now these um, keyways get mounted to the bottom of the tail to here and here and this one goes to the next section up so I'll get those acetone welded on. I've allowed um, some bolt holes in these pieces to bolt onto the belt and also loads of places for strapping and the strapping to the next section up if we need it. So we'll get all that mounted up, get it welded together and see how it looks. All the pieces are acetone welded together so as well as the two bum plate parts which are now fitted either side. Whoops. Um, we've also got this part which is where the dorsal tubes were going to be mounted. So um, due to the part here where the tail is mounted we can see there's a slight angle up there which goes into the small of the back. So we can now put this back onto the suit, bolt this onto the belt and we should be sorted. Okay so here's the tail all in one piece. There's a slightly dodgy kink just halfway down because I haven't glued the two sections together yet. But that will be much smoother when I have. And there we go. So for now I've still got my piece of elastic that attaches to the ribs just um, brought over the back here but as I mentioned before these two holes will have some rib sections mounted and I've also of course got the mountings for the dorsal tubes and the big licky tongue and this feature will carry on all the way up the back. So in terms of the animatronics the plan is to use nylon 3D printer filament in black which I've got some of here and that's going to be fed down some Teflon tube. And that tube is going to go down inside these um, bits of pipe insulation all the way to the bottom. And then that tube is also going to continue over the features on each side. Unfortunately, my tubing isn't quite long enough, so I've got some more on the way. Um, so I can run that all the way down practically to the end of the tail. So I can't get the animatronics working for now. And I really need to know what those angles are like pulling this on each side. And for now I haven't bolted this to the belt, it's just velcroed on each side to some other loops on the belt. But it seems fairly sturdy, so I'm hoping that force of pulling that over my leg is enough just to twitch the tail at the bottom. The other observation of course is that these are very, very much look like very square chunks of plastic. And they're not as organic as the rest of the suit, which has got all of these curved parts on and so on. Um, obviously these are going to get covered up with the dorsal tubes and the ribs and the big licky tongue and the spine piece. So in fact these are really just mountings, you're not going to see much of these square sections by the time the rest of the features are added on there. So that's all I'm going to do in this project. I need to wait for those tubes to arrive so we can try and sort the tail out. I also need to consider whether I just glue two halves together or whether it's detachable for transport because the whole thing's actually really long. Um, it's more than two metres long including these back sections. But of course these are detachable from the suit so the worst is I have to take the tail with these two sections um, and hopefully it will loop around for taking it in the car or something like that. So don't forget to subscribe to check out this project and other projects. Also check out my Patreon crowdfunding campaign where you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me. And that's at patreon.com xrobots.